Thanks for joining me for the last session on the DC architectures. In the first session, we discussed the BGP unnumbered standard specified in RFC 5549, becoming increasingly popular in the data center IP fabric ecosystem, how it compares to eBGP and how it is easier to enable compared to the IGPs. In the second session, we discussed Rocky V2 for boosting data center efficiency and data delivery performance. Michael, thanks for joining me for our last session. It indeed has been a pleasure to discuss foundational topics and questions as they are on top of the mind for many data center technologists. Hey, Aaron, thanks for inviting me again. It's a pleasure as well on my end. Thanks, Michael. So today, Michael, I would like to double click into another fundamental topic of why IP fabrics using the, the three stage or the five stage data center architectures are becoming the de facto standard for modern data centers. So the question to you is, uh, Michael, a traditional LAN data center used to be deployed using access, aggregation, core legacy architectures, and some level of IP awareness was also there. So why the IP fabric or IP class are becoming so popular? Yeah, good point, Aaron. So as a matter of fact, uh, so IP fabrics are around for uh, the last couple of years, actually, highly deployed by uh, the main cloud providers. Mm -hmm. We observed that they got adoption also in case of enterprise and uh, telco clouds, right? Because of the robustness, right? So we don't use any more uh, things like a spanning tree with active standby approach. In case of IP fabrics, we simply use the active active uh, IP ECMP forwarding from the the leaf to spine and super spine, or from a T0, T1, and T2 a block of architecture, right? So we are not relying on any proprietary mechanisms anymore, and it's quite often based on uh, eBGP simply uh, at the leaf, at the spine, and super spine. And uh, we get the benefit of open standard architecture, which is defined in some of the RFC documents, for example, the one that is uh, 7938. Is, uh, is precisely describing what are the recommendation to deploy that type of IP fabrics, highly scalable data center BGP IP fabrics, right? Excellent. That makes a lot more sense. So uh, what are the main physical topology differences for IP fabric versus the traditional layer two, layer three, ethernet access core aggregation? So in fact, uh, Aaron, so when, when you look at the three stage, five stage uh, type of architectures, you don't have uh, usually the back-to-back -back links at the given uh, stage of the architecture. So mm -hmm. for example, the Tor or leaf device is usually not connected to another Tor device, right? Mm -hmm. So in the legacy architecture, sometimes it was the case, in case of IP fabrics, we don't connect at the given stage of the architecture, level of the architecture, uh, by back-to-back -back connect. So, uh, we, we don't use that anymore. And when it comes to the uh, connectivities, we don't rely on any active standby model anymore. Everything is uh, just active-active based on the fact that we can use uh, IP ECMP on the chip itself, right? To reach the destination IP, we can go through multiple links from the tour to the, to, the, to, the, to the spine, right? And then uh, obviously we can easily add links into the architecture, right? So I already mentioned that during our uh, storage video and uh, simply whenever the data is growing in, your, in, in the data center, we can easily add the, these links uh, to the existing infrastructure without changing uh, the, the design uh, uh, dramatically, right? And then the last thing is that the L2 domain uh, diameter is uh, actually reduced or contained in the top of the rack or eventually in the pair of top of the racks, right? So we don't extend these L2 domains. Usually in case of native IP fabrics, it's contained in the top of the rack. The rest is just IP routing, right? Using BGP or any of the IGPs we have on the market, right? So these are the main differences from the physical point of view that you know, we, we just follow the IP clause type of architectures uh, that is predominantly used uh, in case of uh, cloud provider networks, right? So we talked about the physical characteristics of an IP fa fabric. What about the logical part of the, of the design? 
Hey, so from logical point of view, uh, uh, traditionally we had uh, in the access core aggregation, aggregation core, we had the uh, first hop IP gateways somewhere in the aggregation or sometimes even in the core, usually in the aggregation. Mm -hmm. In case of IP fabrics, the first hop IP gateways usually are uh, at the tor at the leaf device level, right? So that we can deploy an anycast type of model and then uh, all the servers can, uh, can reach this first hop IP gateway directly at the top of the rack. And so it means automatically that, uh, uh, that we reduce the blast radius in case of any upgrades or failures of, uh, of the top of the racks. And then the other thing that is more specific to pure IP fabrics is that uh, we have also a trend where actually the server runs BGP or any other form of uh, routing protocol and just connects through BGP to the top of the rack. And then at the server level, we just, through that BGP, we advertise some uh, sort of, of a, a VIP type of prefix from all different servers. So servers are running BGP, they connect through BGP uh, to, the, to the top of the rack. That's the new trend we also observe in, uh, in the tier two cloud providers. Uh, and it's quite interesting because uh, thanks to that approach, we are just uh, reducing the, uh, the utilization of the LACP which is uh, sometimes uh, an easy thing to put in place on the server, but sometimes it's not as easy as it, uh, as it, as it, as it is on the paper, right? And then the last point is uh, uh, the load balancing capabilities. So whenever we start investing in 100 gig, 400 gig, 800 gig, we want to make sure that uh, the load balancing capabilities of the top of the rack are uh, efficiently uh, implemented, right? So that this bandwidth is not uh, wasted, right? So that we use all of the possible links in order to get to the most of the performances from the network. Amazing, absolutely incredible, uh, uh, Michael. So I, I appreciate the, uh, the discussion. I also appreciate uh, your time because these discussions have been remarkable and very educative. And I'm sure I've learned quite a bit and I'm sure our viewers too. Uh, so for all our viewers, uh, with this, we conclude our three-part video series. Please feel free to reach out to Juniper Networks for additional information or questions. Thank you.